This is IBM Museum. Recently on Facebook, there was this um, just clickbait article, of course, of the um, the photo recreations, the families that had um, taken pictures, typically with young children in them, years earlier, and the um, they go through and recreate the um, the picture even a, a couple of decades later on. And one of them was this image. And really for all the backdrop and everything else, uh, none of it was the same. The, the, um, the, they weren't dressed um, really anywhere close, uh, even though I went through and I've cropped the lower picture. Of course, the more recent photo at the bottom. And um, in the, in the lower picture, it does have a, a just a flat panel display. It's probably uh, relatively current. And I don't know if that was in place of the this display that's in the upper left-hand corner of the earlier picture. And I'll go through and I'll, I can probably go through and um, enlarge that particular area. And I don't know if I've seen this this picture before, but I recognize the um, the display. It's got a uh, a very unique look to it, and um, then posted on a, a vintage computer Facebook group of asking who could uh, identify it. Had a friend respond pretty quickly, and he knew what it was. Um, but I did go back and I looked at. An older video I have, and I thought I had captured some of the um, the details of that um, of that the sides of that display. I, I'd shown them running um, on the system, but I had um, I don't know if it was just where the footage just wasn't enough good quality or something else that I that I uh, that I purged it away. But let me go through and I'll hide. I guess it'd be good for me to, to turn on the source. So this is that display. And the uh, my Logitech webcam scene there does fisheye it a little bit. Um, it, it's maybe a little bit more visible there. Um, from the distance, it kind of showing. I mean, but it does have. Um, it's of an age. It does have some curvature to the the front face of the of the CRT. Um, but this is the um, the fifty one forty five color monitor for the IBM PC convertible which is the model number of 5140. And so it had, um, you know, the accessories that were included with it um, were typically numbered 514, whatever, starting from, you know, the, the monochrome monitor is the 5144. And um, the monochrome version is a lot smaller. I do have that earlier video I can link to that that shows kind of those in operation. Um, I think it's like a, a 12 minute video that I was showing. And um, the PC convertible, it's it's actually uh, has the handle on it. I've done other videos with it, adding memory and, and things like that. But these were the external displays that you could get with the unit. And um, I, Luckily enough, from years ago, I, I collected both the monochrome version and the color version. And I've heard of these color units being out there still, um, but I have the only one that I am aware of that still runs. Um, right on the video, I don't have the PC convertible here to show, but I decided to show some of the aspect and probably what I can do that I'm going through and moving around the, the image uh, just to show kind of the view. And um, 
we could even probably see where the uh, the stand position is because it looks like it's actually tilted. Um, well, that might be about the the right uh, tilt, and just the with the low resolution and it being kind of almost a little bit out of frame, or having the the front of the CRT being out of frame. Um, but the, I recognize from these unique controls. And let me go through. Um, I'll actually. I might move the. Um, the Logitech webcam in at some point, but just to show the the side view and and as I said, I thought that I'd gone over this on video that just ended up, I guess, on the cutting room floor or something else there. But the real unique controls here: the power switch, you know, orange uh, toggle switch uh, that IBM was famous for. And it actually has a, a green LED for the power on indicator. I mean, if you don't see an image on the screen. And then it's got even the, um, and I'll skip this in a moment. Then it's got an icon of the headphone um, around that headphone jack that's on the, um, the side of the display here. So, it does put over audio signals as well from the uh, from the connector from the convertible, and probably just relatively uh, some pretty rough speaker level quality video, and then of course the three controls at the back, um, and I'll even show a little bit as I zoom in on some of the discolorization and things like that that those have gone through, what some of those controls are. From this far out view, I, I do want to initially go over that there is a, I haven't seen this used on any other displays, but there's a, this blue bar on the bottom. And I think it goes, it can go back to where that's tilted up the highest. And you raise it up just kind of like, almost like the, model 25 case and it latches or I, I mean you probably have to move that bar down in that slot to go through and um, and that's the position where it's the most horizontal and I don't know if with the angle and everything else and the cords are actually fixed I'll, I can show the back here in a moment as well and uh, and the connection as well as I as I come in, uh, the power cord is a little bit of uh, spider web or something else here. I don't bump everything else here on my on my workbench. But here's the um, the cables coming in. Um, got the ferrite beads on them, and it even has some. Um, some controls on the back here for the um, the vertical hold and um, vertical size, probably relatively standard displays, and you can even see a little bit. And it's more evident on the monochrome version, and I'll, as I say, I'll link in the video for that. Um, but you can see almost the PS2 styling in some of the displays. Uh, their later displays. This seems to be almost like a um, a crossover, you know, from the earlier PC line monitors to the um, to the PS2 series, which were um, introduced. Those, those initial PS2s were introduced uh, about a year after the PC convertible was, and so. A little bit of the zooming in, it's just meaning scooting my webcam base to show a little bit more of those controls of the um, 
even of a, a volume level I guess there on the side for the headphones and then the intensity and contrast contrast in, in intensity and these I don't know how much of the um, maybe between how the controls are you can see the discolorization the exposed area has that kind of that munge um, or it's gone to a, a, a darker kind of a dirty blue and I, I'll have to see and th these controls are actually um, uh, ribbed as well for grip and I'll have to see if uh, that discolorization could maybe come out uh, with some with some treatment um, to make those the the baby blue color like you see for that for that contrast control in the middle and then you can see the headphone icon the embossed around the connector and this has a, uh, it's a CGA monitor and it has a connector much like the PC Junior that was a little bit before this. And the, um, the PC convertible, it was coming out, I believe, in 86. And Richard Sather was the, the German engineer um, just an industrial designer that he did how the PC convertible, the 5140 was, um, how the appearance was. And, um, and that carried over into the, the PS2 line. They have a very similar, um, appearance to the PC convertible, um, for like the, um, the, where the diskette drives are and things like that. And I, I, of course, you'll see that in, in my other videos of the of the PC convertible. I do show opening it up. But I, I thought it was really kind of interesting seeing that um, seeing that uh, photo re recreation of the um, of the the fifty one forty five display. And indeed, these these guys for the photo recreation would be um, it'd be challenging for them to find uh, one of these displays to go through, and and certainly you don't see it um, in operation in the photo. It's just sitting off to the side. Apparently, that PC convertible is is, is there off screen, out of frame. But um, you know these these I, I'm guessing brothers would be. Um, It'd be kind of challenging for them to find one of these monitors, uh, even in non-operational status, to have off the side of their their mind recreation. Maybe they're out there. Maybe they want to uh, talk to me and everything else that uh, uh, we could go through. And I'm I'm not letting this operational display uh, get away from me, though. I I'm gonna keep it because just uh, everyone else. Uh, all the others I've heard of are um, are broken if they're even still around. So, just one of those things that stood out to me. And again, this off the wall content. I thought it was kind of interesting for me um, spotting this out there. And if you enjoy this video, click on that like button. That's very much appreciated. Leave your comments, even if you know the brothers or the brothers themselves can can contact me and see uh, just talk old times and maybe the what they may remember about that system that their family had as well. And that does, you know, it places it. It's got to be um, at least in that um, 1986 or maybe a few years after that time period uh, for that to be in their household and might be an interesting story of itself. But 
And if you would like to see more of the off the wall content like this, click on that subscribe button, tell your friends, let's get more subscribers. We're going a little bit over 300 subscribers now and I'm, I'm happy for that, but I want many, many more. But that is all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.